3 and, and we'll start in verse 16. I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Hmm. Give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's a very important thing, the knowledge of him. That's just not knowing, okay, he's God. He's part of the Godhead. He created the earth, the universe. <laughs> he created everything, everything. He created us. He put us together. So knowing him is a very important thing. But how do you get to know him? I mean, he's not, you know, somebody you can see, feel, or touch. All we know about him is through the spirit. And sometimes, and, and you know, more, more not than often, <laughs> uh, people see him, have a vision of him, see him supernaturally. But we have to be able to have a place where we can see him. We have to be able to visualize who he is and the power that he has and that he's bestowed upon us. All that he has, he's, he's given unto us all spiritual blessings. That's everything that God has. So you must, to know him, you have to know who he is, like what he's done. So you have to know him through his word. Amen. Because in John, he says, you know, me and my word are one. Just like we and him are one. Him and his word are one. And so that's why he gives us his word. So he can grow in us. Right? When you're filled with the fullness of God, it means you're filled with his word. But his word is being active in you. And your word is performing in you. His word, he is the performer of his word. I mean, like you put the word in and, you know, and then you ask the Holy Spirit to show you, to teach you, to guide you, to explain things to you, to show us about Jesus. I think about Jesus sometimes when he was walking around with the disciples. I mean, they didn't, they didn't have all these letters. <laughs> they had nothing. They had the name of Jesus and Jesus talking to them. And at that point, I mean, they haven't been able to accept him as Lord and Savior because he hadn't gone to the cross. And he talked about it a couple of times, and they were like scratching their heads. What is he talking about? <laughs> I'm going away, and, and you're not coming with me, you know, but I'll be back. <laughs> you know, but I mean, that's nothing they had ever experienced before, you know? And they, he, they went around with him and he did all the miracles, all the signs and wonders and everything, you know, fed the 5,000 and the 4,000 and, you know, supernaturally the food multiplied. And then, you know, he had to, he had to look at them and they, were, they didn't know what he was talking about or why this happened, how it happened. They forgot it as almost as soon as it was over. They got in the boat, went to the other side, and they, oh, they forgot to get food. <laughs> and they were with the bread of life. But see, they didn't have a full understanding of him until after he went to the cross. And then they realized, you know, that they had to go to the cross too. <laughs> Just like you and I. We have to go to the cross how do you know yourself even, who you are? Do you ever have that problem? You ever go trying to find yourself? <laughs> and I was nowhere to be found. <laughs> because we think of ourselves in a natural way. You know, we think of ourselves, you know, we're flesh and blood. We got a mind, you know, well, I don't have much education, but, you know, I've had a few jobs and I'm, I'm not much, you know, there's not much about me. Well, you know what the biggest thing about you is? You say you have Jesus. 
as your Lord and Savior and God as your Father and the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, teaching you and guiding you and showing you which way to go and which word to speak. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's so much, but we hardly think about it. You know, we go along just living like mere mortals. If we weren't, if we were living like we were supposed to live, you know, we'd be in a huge, big church with thousands of people. and <laughs> We'd be out there telling people about Jesus and how good he is to us and what he's done for us and, you know, and bring them into church. But you know what? I don't know where we have the disconnect. I think it's... Um, I think it's like we, because we can't see it physically, we're in a physical world and everything we see and do and touch is all related to even, even when we come here, you know, you know, and then unless we're here in praise and worship, we're nowhere near where God is, <laughs> you know, we don't even think about it. I'm not saying you're all like that, but I'm just saying from time to time, it's like you're, you, you, we are, we are out there. It, living like mere mortals when there's so much for us to have, you know, even in our own personal, personal space, knowing who we are, what are the three things I usually say, who we are, what we have, and what we can do. Say it with me, who we are, what we have, and what we can do, and then go do it. <laughs> But that's part of the that's part of the thing is that you know we live in a society where we're not really it's not really open for you to go out and you know to spread the word. So we have to get a little bit bolder. Mm -hmm, that's what I mean. That's right. Exactly. So that's what I'm talking about. This word here will fill us up and show us, give us knowledge of Him, because. God said, when he looks at us, it's like, you know, we're the same as Jesus. As he is in this world, so am I. Even that's a stretch when you think about it. I'm like Jesus, but you are. You know, these hands, they lay hands on people and they recover. Amen? But you have to lay hands on people. <laughs> That's the thing. You have to be always looking for opportunities and praying for opportunities and praying for, you know, going out and, you know, where you don't have to have it always in your mind, but just, you know, Lord, I just want you to use me today. Be available. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Is make yourself available to him because he wants to use you more than you want to be used. <laughs> And then it becomes more of a, a, a natural thing to do, right? That's what you live for, is to, you know, is to go out and be, you know, be his ambassador. Be his ambassador. Because if, you know, any other ambassador from another country would go, would leave here and go to another country, well, Canada would provide for that, provide a place to live, give them money to live on, you know, I mean, they'd be provided for. They wouldn't have to go scratching around or walk in the streets or put their hand out and beg for food. No, Canada would treat them just like they're living in Canada. But they're an ambassador to another country. And so that's how we are. We are ambassadors for Christ. And when Jesus, God says, <laughs> all, heavenly special, all heavenly blessings are yours. It's not even something you have to pray for. You're just saying it. Kenneth Copeland does marvelous teaching about the blessing of God. Be walking in the blessing. You're walking in the blessing. Say, I'm walking in the blessing. Walking in the blessing. You don't have to wait to get blessed. What does being blessed mean to you? What does that mean? What does that word mean? Be empowered to prosper. To be empowered to prosper. You are empowered. Say, I am <laughs> empowered. To prosper. So, you know, but we're going, we're always praying, oh, I need money to pay the light bill. I need money to do this and money to do that. Well, you know what? Whatever you need, just reach out and receive and say, it's mine. I take it now. 
It's a declaration of taking what God provided. He's Jehovah Jireh. What? He's Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. He has a supply with your name on it. But it's walking in that place of confidence of who you are and what you have and what you can do. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm preaching to myself too. I'm not just preaching to you. I know that's where, that's where we need to go. You know? But to get there... There's a little place here. Wait now, just a second. I'm going to watch my clock. We'll finish this prayer in Ephesians. <laughs> Revelation in your knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you might know what is the hope of his calling to you. You know, the eyes of your... That's what you need to say is... That the eyes of my understanding be enlightened. It's like light be in my understanding. So I know I don't have to be fretful. I don't have to be anxious. I don't have to wonder, is God going to heal me or not? No, we thank him that he's already healed. But we might still have symptoms in our bodies. But the, when you said, Jesus, come into my heart, the plan and purpose for your life was out there. God doesn't make it up as he's going along. <laughs> he doesn't make up your story as, you, as you're going along. Your story is already written. There's already an end to that. So what we have to do is, Lord, keep me on this path that you have for me, the one that you've anointed, that you predestined for me to walk in. So I can be what you want me to do what you want me to be, how you want me to be. That should be our main job. And then doing it, walking in the rest that he has provided because he's already got it done. It's finding that path. Do you ever get up in the morning and just kind of like not have a plan? And then all of a sudden your day is all planned out because, you know, Somebody called, or somebody dropped over, or you were out and you saw somebody and you went to them, or, you know, I mean, it was just nothing you planned, but you made yourself available for the plan that God has in your life, right? Because that's what we want to end up with the plan that he has for us. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> If I had to look at your faces to see how I'm preaching, it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and amen now and again is good, and a smile on your face is good, and nodding heads, I like that. <laughs> I'm not trying to sell you anything, because you already got it. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to build your confidence in that fact that it's already done. You know, like, I don't know what my end game is. I mean, so far, I mean, we've walked along and we've dealt with life. Life was there. Life came and crossed our path. And we had to, you've all had situations that you didn't expect happening, coming out of left field with kids and grandkids. And, you know, I mean, it's, if you stop to think about it, you know, you'd go nuts. <laughs> what am I going to do? But when you have confidence in the word of God, that the word of God, the word of God, the word of God is going to see you through. We have confidence. If you read the stories in Hebrews 11, I mean, you know, the walk, the walk of faith through all those people. And a lot of them didn't even get an end result. You know, Abraham didn't see everything that happened for him. You know, he said, look up at the stars, you know, that's going to be, he didn't see all that in his life. He's seen it now from where he is, but when he was on this earth, he didn't. Apostle Paul, he wrote all these letters. He didn't know he was going to be put in the Bible, put in a Bible that was going to be going for thousands of years, being read by, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of churches every Sunday and whenever in the middle of the week. And he didn't know that. 
But he, he went into the dungeon and got hung up there on the, you know, with the chains. <laughs> but the only thing, the thing that he knew, the thing that he knew, and it's all you have to know. It's all you say. This is all I have to know. Who you are, <laughs> what you have, and what you can do. That's all you need to know. You have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you to teach you, to guide you, to show you. To get you out of your funk sometimes. <laughs> but I don't want to do that. I didn't want to go there. I just want to sit in the hot tub. <laughs> hey, you can do a lot from sitting in the hot tub. That could be your prayer closet. <laughs> I'm, not, you know, I'm not saying you can't have any fun now. I mean, Gary and I love to ride motorcycles, and we're expecting to be on it very soon. Yeah, he's on the end of his course here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we love that, you know? Like somebody said, you should call your motorcycle your knees, so when anybody calls and you're out on the motorcycle, you can say, I'm sorry, he's out on his knees. <laughs> but you know what? I sit on the back of that motorcycle, and I am singing in the spirit. I'm looking around at nature. I'm just having just a wonderful time. And sometimes somebody will cross my mind and I'll lift them up to the Lord. And, you know, <laughs> you can use any place. Any place, no matter. You can be hung up in a dungeon up to your neck and poop. And start singing. <laughs> just like Paul and Silas. I don't think I've been in a, as bad a situation. You know, I mean, we had to flee from our house because of the fire. And then, you know, then they were trying to scare us with the with the flood. And, you know, and just uh, yesterday or a couple of days ago, Jennifer is out in B.C. She was in Kamloops when all the Northwest Territories caught on fire. She said they were sitting there and uh, they were at a cottage and looked across the lake and here was this fire. But it looked like it was a long ways away. Well, I tell you what, the wind got a hold of that. It jumped the lake. And they were in their car, packed up and ready to go home. And I happened to. Uh, Kelowna. Kelowna. Anyway, so I was, and I, you know, like I just um, had a thought about her, you know, the day before. And I just, hey, I'm texting is what people do these days. They don't call. <laughs> they text. <laughs> How many love texting? Not me. <laughs> but anyway, I texted H E Y. Hey, and and she got back to me and told me, you know, that there were that's where they were, they were uh, a few days away. Then the next thing I get this no, we have to pack everything up and go because head back we have to drive seven hours and there's just long lines of traffic. You know, and they had to drive up through Jasper and down through Edmonton and, you know, and all the, I mean, like, in the evening, too, you know. But they weren't the only ones. I don't know. There was a big fire there in Kelowna. I heard on the news that, uh, you know, that people lost their homes. And that's where her friends lived that they were out camping with. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, things, I'm not thinking anything about her being in trouble or, you know, thinking about that. But then when I get that message, well, now I've got something to do. I've got to pray, you know. That's what I, that comes up in me. I'm going to pray for my daughter and her husband and their dog, Luca. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you know, it's just um, every single day, 24 hours, 24-7, God has already seen it all. You've seen it, and he's seen it. He's seen it. He's, he's got it out there, you know. And if you happen to go off to the left or to the right where you're not supposed to go, you say, God, direct my path. The word, the Holy Spirit directs your path. He's got angels out in front of you. You know, use your angels. Dispatch your angels to hearken onto the word of God. 
you know, and in these last days, I mean, I don't know, people went to vacation over in Hawaii, and then the next thing you know, the place is burning up. See, it's not natural. There's something, you know, going on in the atmosphere, and we, hmm? Well, I mean, there's lots of negative th stuff. There's negative spirits that are, you know, I don't know. I can't get into anything because I don't know. But uh, it's principalities and powers. But it's also <laughs> the end times. So, you know, you're not going to stop it. You're not going to stop it. But you're going to keep yourself in a place where you're protected. You know, we didn't lose our house. We didn't have a flood, and some people did. Some people had their, I mean, look at Ann and Rick. <laughs> Every time I drive by her house, I'm saying, praise the Lord. That's a little corner of heaven right there on Yankee Town Road. Because if you ever, have you driven out there? Anybody has not driven out there? It is like, oh. And I, uh, I'd like them to do something with it because it, it makes me, it takes my peace away, you know. But, um. You can't let that happen either. But see, all of this stuff, all of these powers and principalities are not just of things. I mean, it's the people. You know, the people on earth today are rattled. And they're not happy people. They, are, they don't know what's going on, you know. And, uh, you know, so you need to pray for this. It's time to pray. It's time to really, you know, put that together and use that weapon. It's a weapon, really. And rejoice and be happy to, and be nice to people. <laughs> you know, anytime you get an opportunity, you know, to say something, don't get on with them and they're like, oh, this is happening, and that's on. Yeah, isn't that terrible? No, 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 no. Don't do that. I mean, you know, we figure out a way to get to their hearts. Say, Lord, help me. Help me to, to you know, to talk to this person. Even if you're just talking about kids or something, whatever, or touching, you're touching people, you know? You're filled with the Holy Spirit. You're filled with the glory of God, Christ in you. Christ in you, 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 Christ in you. What is it? The hope of glory. Your vessels of glory. Your vessels of glory. And wherever you go, you make a difference. You make a difference in the atmosphere. You know, even if you're not talking to anybody, you're there. And things, you know, you got a, you got a whole, the whole host of heaven is around you. When you go somewhere, you're big. <laughs> and especially if you're filled with the fullness of God, you know, and the word is so exciting. Oh, wow. I mean, not that we're out of Job. I mean, <laughs> but you know what? In the end. He, 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 uh, the, it's the best lesson in the Bible. He was self-righteous. Job was self-righteous. What he feared came upon him. What you fear comes upon you. And what you faith comes up, come upon you. But faith and fear cannot exist together. You're either in faith or you're in fear. So it's good to check yourself and just say, okay, God, I'm just putting everything out there. Whatever is not of you, I'm going to peer, tear down strongholds. We sang about that today, tearing down those strongholds. You want to speak? <laughs> no, but I was thinking when you were talking about it, 2 Corinthians 3.18 says that when the Spirit of the Lord has liberty in your life, that you are changed from glory to glory, but he's the change agent. Yeah. You need to believe that he's able to perform what he promised, but it's from glory to glory means it's a lifelong process. Yeah. It's not all of a sudden you're there, yeah. but you enjoy the journey because you're walking in righteousness, peace and joy. And you're, all you're, you're operating out of that root of righteousness. 
and realize you know, that he treats there. you like you're already there with him. Yeah, he does. It's like he it's like when he teaches the, the Lord prayer. It's like, Lord, not my will be done on earth, but your yours. Will. Y- your, let, and this let is the your earth. kingdom come in this earth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is the earth. Your kingdom come. Lord, that's a good prayer. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in this earth as it is in heaven. You know? Yeah. Did I say my kingdom? No. no. Oh. <laughs> I <thought> you... <laughs> Are you God? <laughs> But it's true. I mean, it's not, it's not that hard. So don't go away out of here feeling all condemned and everything. I do not want you to be condemned because that's a good place to start. Sure, while well, I'm finding my place over here. Just one more little thing. <laughs> okay. Because at 3 o'clock this morning, I was getting cold water out of the fridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this thought occurred to me about, about when Dale Bigley comes. He's coming 10th, 11th, and 12th. Well, the 15th and the 16th is one day called Rosh Hashanah, the head of the Jewish New Year. So it's the year 5784. Five is grace. Seven is completeness. Eight is a new beginning. And four is an open door. Yeah. Yeah. So when Rosh Hashanah comes, it's an open door for all of us here. Yes. Yeah. A brand new, fresh, open door, and God does everything that He's going to do in the church and with the Jews according to that calendar. If He's dealing with the nations, He'll use the Gregorian calendar. But when He's dealing with us, that calendar is ours. You can put that in the bank and get your expectation up, because Dale Bagley's not coming. Jesus is coming in a manifestation, and He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to come for a visitation. He He wants wants to to come come for a a habitation. (laughs) He wants to live in you. And you know, every Rosh Hashanah, every Rosh Hashanah, a Rosh Rosh Hashanah. (laughs) Is that right, Shelly? You know, I'm I'm believing that that's when Jesus is coming. The rapture is going to happen on Rosh Hashanah. And then... You know, and if it doesn't happen this year, well, then oh, it'll happen next year, right? I'm Rosh Hashanah. But, you know, we, we have that expectation. It says it encourage one another with that expectation and think about the rapture. I mean, not put everything else aside, no, because we have work to do before that happens. We've got to get as many people in as we can. I mean, this is like, there's a big gong going out there. Gong, gong, gong. Get the people in. Get them in the kingdom. Right? This is like, you know, it's not just every day as every day, because you never know. There's a fire or a flood or something. Now I forget where I was going to go here. (laughs) What? You love a guess. So what I was going to do today <laughs> was give you some scriptures to help you. You want If you have a pen and a piece of paper, write them down. Write them inside your Bible or something. You don't have to write the whole verse there, but just write the scriptures and just take them out. There's 15 of them. There's 15 of them. And this will help you to understand, you know, uh, in the Bible, there are some verses that in him and in whom, in Christ, that will, you know, encourage you to think that way, that you're in Christ. And so I think when we, when we take these scriptures and we start meditating them, like look them up in your Bible and read them, and then, um, you know, start meditating on them. Just meditating, take them one at a time. Remember we had these little cards? I don't know if anybody... Does everybody still have their little I am card? Yes, these are gold. If you don't have one, come and see me after. I've only got a few here, but Pastor Paul is coming back next week, so we'll <laughs> be able to find something. <laughs> okay, Romans 8 1. Now, this is when Gary talked about this last week. And um, when he was preaching, I thought, he was, I thought Ashton was going to preach my sermon this morning. <laughs> She's up talking about the blood. <laughs> She's going now, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Romans 8, 1. Mm-hmm. 
There is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So that's one, that's one verse. Now you meditate that, and you can say, you can say um, I'm not walking after the flesh today. I'm walking after the spirit today. I'm not going to be led by my mind, will, and emotions. I'm going to be led by the Spirit of God. I'm not going to be led by my bond, my body or my bank account. <laughs> right? Well, not walking after the flesh. See, those are things that are in this world that you can touch, taste, feel, see, and hear. But after the Spirit, which is the Word of God, which is what God says you have, who you are, what you have, and what you can do. Right? That's what we have to meditate on. Okay, now Romans 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free, say free, free. from the law of sin and death. See, life in Christ Jesus trumps the spirit of sin and death. What's sin and death? Sickness, disease, you know, bad thinking, wrong thinking, carnal thinking, worldly thinking, <laughs> lusting after things, right? So the law of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Free means that it has no dominion over you. Made you free. Say, it's made me free, made me free. from the law of sin and death. See, in the law of sin and death, there's sickness, disease, poverty, everything that's dark in the darkness, right? So if, if it tries to get on you, then you say, no, 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 I have the spirit of life, of life of Christ Jesus in me. I have the spirit, say it, I have the spirit of life in Christ Jesus in me. So when those attacks come out of that kingdom, this kingdom of sin and death, that's the devil's kingdom, that's the darkness, that's bad thinking, negative thoughts, all that stuff, stuff that keeps you awake at night, keeps you walking back and forth, wringing your hands and sweating about it. No, no money in the bank. Well, just praise God. I am the spirit of life, Jesus. And Je God is Jehovah Jireh. And so he provides all my needs according to his riches and glory. So you got to have some backup in there. You can't just say, I got no money, got no money, can't do anything. I'm going to be put out in the street. No. <laughs> That's playing the devil's music. That's the devil's song. Right? We don't want to go there. But that, that just you know, brings your thinking down. You have to have your mind renewed. Your mind renewed. Okay, the third one is Romans 8.16. It's across the way there. The Spirit it's himself testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. Ha, ha, ha. That trumps it all. And if children, oh, it gets better, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. If indeed... We suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. So if we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him, that means overcoming. That means taking a stand. It means I messed up, God. I'm humbling myself and coming into your presence, asking for your help. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me to, you know, not do this anymore. And he will. He will. Now, you may do it again and again and again after that, but he will help you. He's helping you, even if you do do it again. Like Kenneth Copeland, he had to get out and apologize to everybody because he lied to them. <laughs> he was evangelistic. And that's what he had to say, you know? And I remember Jesse Duplantis doing the same thing, getting mad at people, you know, short-tempered and whatever, and then having to go back and think, oh, I apologize, I apologize. Even say, look, I'm a minister. Have you ever had to do it? <laughs> I've had to do it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know you thought I'd never do anything wrong. <laughs> Not much, anyway. If indeed we suffer with him, so that we be also glorified with him. And then um, the next one is Romans 4. 
So we being many are one body in Christ and everyone members of one and one of another. So being conscious that you are part of the body of Christ. The body of Christ is like that person sitting behind you, beside you, in over in Africa somewhere. <laughs> There's a big body of Christ. You feel like you're all alone and there's nobody with you. There's a big body of Christ. You're part of the body. So be a part of the body. You know, don't be a cancer in the body. Be strong in the body. Declare things over the body. Pray for the church in Africa or Philippines or pray for Ukraine. Pray for Christians all around the world. You know? Oh, I'm sorry. Romans 4. Uh, ooh, no, Romans 8, 16, and 17. We didn't get to 17 yet. Oh, I guess I did. If children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so, then we suffer with him that we might also be glorified together. Hallelujah. Uh, next would be Romans 4, 12, 5. I can't stop on all of these and expound on them. <laughs> Romans 12, I'm sorry, Romans 12. So, we being many are one body. Okay, we got that one. Uh, the next one is 1 Corinthians 1, 2. To the church, assembly of God, which is in Corinth, to those consecrated and purified and made holy in Christ Jesus, who are selected and called to be saints, God's people together with all those who in any place call upon and give honor to the name of the Lord, our, G our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We have the victory. Say, we have the victory. Yes. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. We go from victory to victory. And then the next one is uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 30. But of him you are in Christ, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So those are the four things that we have going on in us. They're freebies. <laughs> when you say, Jesus, come into my life, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Say, I'm the redeemed of the Lord. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. And number eight is 2 Corinthians 2.14. But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumph as trophies of Christ's victory, and through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of his knowledge everywhere. Wow. See, wherever you go, you have the fragrance of the knowledge of God coming out of you. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice perfume. 2 Corinthians 5.17 ah, is my favorite. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So your old you is dead and gone. Dead and gone. Say dead and gone. Dead and gone. Has no dominion over you. <laughs> only the only the stuff from the new creation. Galatians ten, I mean Galatians three twenty six is number ten. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. You are all sons and daughters of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And number twelve. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Number 11, Galatians 3.28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. 
Hallelujah. We're all one. And we're one with God and one with Christ. Hallelujah. These are good scriptures. <laughs> Number 12, Ephesians 1, 7. In him... We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Number 13, Ephesians 1, 3 to 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies in Christ, just as he chose us in him before, when? before the foundation of the world, that we should be, what? Holy and without blame before him in love. That's who we are, what we have and what we can do. And number 14, Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, See, you were created for good works. So you never have to wonder what you're supposed to be doing. Just do good works. Amen? Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God's already got them prepared. Right? And uh, number 15, Colossians 2, 9 and 10. For in him dwells all the fullness. Ha! <laughs> All the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are what? What does it say? You are. You are what? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Who is what? The head of all principality and power. You have to do this every day. Every day, every day, every day. I mean, that's if you want to have victory every day. <laughs> if you want to know who you are in Christ, what you have and what you can do. You know, there's a little bit of work, homework involved. Shut the tea off for half an hour and you can do it. Then you can turn the TV on. You probably don't want to then. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your word. Your word is alive and active and operative in our lives today. We thank you, God, hallelujah, that you've given us all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies. And I release them now. I release them now to this congregation, Lord. I thank you, Father, that we are strong in the Lord. Say, I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And I have authority. Over all the works of the enemy. Sin does not have dominion over me. But I have dominion over sin. I have dominion over sickness and disease. I have dominion over lack. Hallelujah. I'm in heaven. This is heaven. You can have it if you want it. You can have as much of God as you want. But it requires, you know, it requires you to put in the time of praying in the spirit. I mean, that's another thing, you know, just walking along. You know, like it's there. It keeps you up. It keeps you going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we come together. We come to church. We join together. We become one in the body of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We hope this message has encouraged you in your relationship with the Lord. For more information and ministry resources, we invite you to visit our website at www.newcovenantchurch.ca. We look forward to you joining us next time as we continue to live victoriously.